for the people who say, um, I'm actually very healthy, I don't eat beef and I don't eat chicken. Um, I basically live on fish. So what's wrong with that? Is that okay or is there? Well, I'll kick off with my book, Killer Fish. <laughs> That's good. I know, I, I, I couldn't believe that up until five years ago, nobody had actually championed uh, the issue on fish. And so I think why I write books quite often is so I really have to learn a lot about the subject. And of course, I'm just uh, cocky enough to think I know a lot about something, so I put the title down and then I research it. I was overwhelmingly stunned at how much worse it was than I thought. Uh, I had the privilege to interview uh, out of the seven top marine biologists, oceanographic scientists on Earth, three of them. Every one of them told me that every drop of drinking water on the Earth now has pharmaceutical drugs in it. And I went as far as saying, you mean in the North Pole and South Pole where people don't live? And they said, yes, all three definitively, yes, because of rain. Plastic, plastic is in every drop of water today. And uh, there is a giant land dump for the listeners in the room and around the world uh, that's larger than the state of California made of plastic that's floating in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. That for two decades, ships going from Asia to the western part of North America, literally have to go around it, navigate around it. Uh, fish were never meant to be eaten by a human being. Let's start with the biology. Let's imagine we had a pristine planet and that we didn't pollute and the industrial revolution didn't occur. When you take a fish out of the water within 20 to 30 minutes, the fats in it, and by the way, there's animal saturated fat, it's not all omega oils in right. it, turn rancid and become something that we call a lipid peroxide. We've known for 60 solid years in science that lipid peroxides are carcinogens. So every bit of fish, if it was as clean as a whistle, within 20 to 30 minutes, when you remove it from its environment, picture you being in the water for 20 or 30 minutes, what you'd be like. Well, it's the exact reversal with the fish. The oxidation occurs and this becomes a carcinogen. I quoted the largest study ever done on fish and fish oil consumption in Finland with over 600,000 people, where literally they showed that people had double the heart attacks and strokes who ate more fish and more fish oil. Double. And you're being told by the alternative medical uh, culture that fish oil is great to reverse cardiovascular disease. Uh, there's an international organization on lipids, on fats. They basically tell you not to eat fish or take fish oil. These, this is the authoritative voice of lipids and fats on the planet that have Congress and get together and do the latest research and exchange empirical evidence. They're telling you not to take fish oil. So, I mean, you ask how meat and dairy becomes popular? Well, the same with fish. And, you know, most people want to compromise. They don't want to change today. And we are at a point where there's no time for compromise. We're at the edge of a cliff and we're about ready to fall off as individuals and as a humanity, as a human race. We've got to get back to normality now. Mm. And fish is not normality. Just because you think you're brave, you gave up hamburgers and chicken, fish doesn't make you brave. I would actually purport to you that fish is more disease-causing than even red meat. Chicken is certainly more disease-causing than red meat. Look at the work of my former colleague, Virginia Livingston, who for over 50 years showed you there were viruses in the chicken, even after cooking, that transferred into the human body cells, and mutated them, and created all forms of cancer. So, as Dr. Furman basically pointed out, there's this thousand incredibly perfect studies. When he says empirically correct studies, these are studies that if you took anti plant-based eating researchers, and you said, show me where there's a flaw in this study, there's a thousand studies they can't see flaws in. There's tens of thousands of studies that allude to what we're talking about now, or directly stated. So, I don't know why we even have to have this discussion. It's a little bit silly as far as I'm concerned at this point in 2015. And 
I think it's worth knowing that some of the leading experts in the world have estimated that global fish stocks will be gone by 2048. That's right. Um, it, and, and so people are fish farming like crazy. Uh, w and of course, farmed fish are much more polluted than, than I mean, fish are only as clean as the water they're swimming in, of mm. course. Um, and what they're fed, exactly. And so there's, there's just, I, I, it, it, it's very, very concerning when you think about these things because we're, we're basically, all of our mainstream bot organizations for nutrition are saying, eat two, at least two servings of fish a week. And if, if more and more people start doing that, uh, you know, the, the fish stocks will be gone sooner and sooner. I, I mean, we're, we're, they're not, our, their days are numbered uh, to start with. So it doesn't make sense for us to be promoting fish on a sort of global level with what we know. And fish are, you know, more and more polluted. The larger fish, the higher up on the food chain you go, uh, the more polluted they are. They are the number one source of dioxins. They are the number one source of heavy metals in the diet. So there are a lot of problems with, with fish consumption. As an example, the North Sea, where they assumed, rightfully, they assumed that the fish closer to land would be more polluted. They find the fish that are 100 to 200 miles offshore are actually more polluted than the ones close to the land. This is so pervasive today. And let me repeat what you said, because it's the most powerful thing that was just stated here that every marine biologist and top scientist, every single one concur, they agree that by, 19, uh, by 2048, we have fished out the major fish in the ocean. Now Einstein, before his death, said, after the oceans die, we have five years. I heard the polar bears don't like it either. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> They're becoming sterile, by the way. Yeah. from all the pollution of the fish they eat. That's true. You know, I was shocked <clears throat> when somebody asked me the question, what about uh, fish that comes from the Atlantic Ocean rather than farm-grown fish? And I said, yeah, it's probably a much better idea. I had no idea that salmon, which we always sort of assumed was coming from, from uh, wild, clean waters, well, most of these so-called Atlantic water-grown fish are also coming from fish farms that are along the Atlantic border. So, I mean, everything is changing. We just changed the vocabulary, have some euphemisms, and yet uh, we're totally unaware of how everything is changing. So what he's just saying is there's massive fraud and there's no laws that protect you anywhere in the world. That the fish you're being... Uh, told you're eating on a menu at a fine restaurant, most likely isn't the fish. Correct. And because codfish is one example. Now we have prolific amounts of lobster. And I didn't understand why. Uh, when I go to New England and speak or visit, uh, the poor lobstermen, or I feel for them, but at the same point I'm happy, they're going out of business. And the reason is that these lobster prices have plummeted down to fractions of what they were. And because once the cod was gone, that environmentally took care and weeded out the lobster, now the lobsters are just growing like wild. Uh, you're already seeing the beginning of the collapse of the entire ocean. And unless we put the brakes, let's make a real clear point. Unless we put the brakes on today and learn to back up fast, this is not going to stop. There's no way to stop this unless we stop today and put the brakes on and go back very fast.